be a little bit banged up going into it, but uh, where we'll quickly be healthy and have a chance to we're coaching in that day. But throwing the, in, in the pool, guys, some of which have played, and, uh, uh, some that haven't, but uh, not much bad about here. He told like, us that it was always USC. There was like, never been a consideration. What was your reaction when you found out that this former five-star prospect lost his game? Yeah, I think it's just in two recruiting cycles for us, whether it's you know high school ranks or, or junior college ranks. I mean, everything's you know obviously because football changed a lot, so we're we're, we're still learning you know the, the, the transfer aspect of things. But what you're finding now, I think, for a lot of these guys, is USC is a, a prime location for them. Um, you know, experience maybe a, a you know whether it's a college town you know, if they want to change the scenery, whether it's from an academic standpoint, whether it's from a football standpoint. Obviously, they would aspirations to play at elite level here, so. Um, it, it checks a lot of boxes for guys, and some some guys, and not specific to Bear, but I think it's a good example. They have to go other places to, to kind of you know, maybe find out what they want, and uh, um, not, not every place has what, what USC has. So he was silent a few minutes ago at Oklahoma. Do you, do you recall that? We've known Bear for, for a long time, um, and his body has changed over time in a real positive way. I mean, he's worked his tail off, and uh, um, no, we we saw him. Uh, I guess maybe you know when, when he came on his trip. I think the last time we saw him was pre-COVID, so he stayed a young guy back then. But uh, that works out well. So the perception he was... outside the program is that you're coaching for your job this season. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think 21 years in the business. I mean, I think you're coaching for your job all the time. I think you know pressure comes with it. Um, I, I think about um, what are it's at Missouri or Washington State or, or Ohio State or, or Oklahoma. I think. Uh, you know, I don't feel any different than that in any other of those years. There's a lot of pressure on, on football coaches that are left. Do you take any part of the off season ever? Is there ever like a soul searching element to your off seasons, like studying other defenses, or is that Absolutely. just not something you're normally? No, doing? I think, yeah, and I think most coaches would tell you the same thing. I mean, that, that's part of it. The, the two things you do is obviously, you know, um, the, the most recent thing would be the previous year, obviously going through that and, and attack it from the, the standpoint that you did well with the things you need to improve on. And then you got to obviously you know, weigh that in terms of coaching your, your current team, um, which is really, really important that you don't get lost in the sauce of, you know, you're not coaching the 22 team in, in this particular instance. On the same note, you're looking at absolutely NFL film, college film, um, trends, you know, as well as not just studying defenses, but offenses, obviously the opponents that you're going to play, and, and again, trends from, from that standpoint. So you're looking at all that. Is there anything that, that, that can help you? Uh, you know, moving forward, what, what you don't get in the business of doing, and this takes a lot of maturity, and, and I've used that term, I don't know if it's the right thing to say, but uh, I'll say it anyway, maturity and discipline um, from a coaching standpoint, you know, in, in terms of those, are, are you looking, are you having the, um, what are we changing meetings, are you doing the, what, what's the best thing moving forward, and sometimes you got to stop, you know, using defensive staff in particular, but also as you police yourself, um, is looking through, you, know, you press the pause button and say, okay, what, 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 what's your intention here, right? And so, uh, no, all that takes place in the offseason. Of course, you're heading into your second uh, fall camp. Uh, you know, what are some aspects where you are looking to uh, improve or have improved this offseason? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, some of the areas where, uh, you know, you are going to leave in, in this, uh, some of the doubt Say again, I'm sorry. Some of the, like, the, the negatives that you're going to leave in last year and yep. you're from. Well, you know, you, you don't carry any of the positives with you, so what you can't do is you can't, you know, like, attempt to carry the negatives with you, which is a good thing, right? Um, year two was common in regards to what year one was going to be. And I think part of that is you know, having an experience in a couple different spots, whether it's taking over a defense for the third time. You know, year two comes, and, and so what, what that comes with is, as everything you mentioned, some, some negatives and some positives. And what you got to do is you got to make sure that you – or again, discipline in that way, you know, and, and, and not just focus on the, the negative piece. Um, a lot of teams, you know, lost the game. They didn't, didn't think they're going to um, lose maybe last year. That happened in every sport, including in college football, including with us. So you're going to focus on the 11 wins and the three losses. Um, and so, yeah, you, you, you analyze all those things. But, but ultimately what you're looking for is the tangible piece. And one of the things, you know, are we a bigger, faster, stronger football team as we sit here today than we did a year ago at this time? Again, keep it tangible. The, 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 the answer, not in my opinion, it's fact, is we are. Now we got to make sure we play more physical, we play faster and all those things. And then also with that is make sure that we put the guys in the best situation to, to be successful. But, um, so all those things got to move the needle. We can move to a more consistent unit, more physical unit, tougher unit, and a unit that plays four quarters. And so all that has to take place this fall camp and obviously continue the season. Whether it's fair or not, do you think that the, the, the perception is that the defensive recruits are coming 
coming to USC through the transfer portal. It's not happening at the high school level. Why do you, why do you think that message is resonating with the with the transfers more than the recruits? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's really hard to, to either combat a narrative or create a narrative as a, as a football coach. I mean, one of the things for us in particular is we have to make sure that we're looking through the lens of what's our current roster and how do we build it the, the, the best way. And I think it's it's changed over time, and obviously in a short period of time as coaches, for, for any college coach who tells you they've got to figure it out in terms of what that model is, um, I promise to you they're lying. You know, um, and so, and, and what that means is so, so much of it is still, you know, we do so much same ads in terms of the, the high school recruiting piece. And then, they're, they're, and then all of a sudden it's this transfer window and everything's about transfers. And then that window closes and everything is about the high school guys. And so part of it is looking at it through the lens, you know, I, I, um, having not coached in the NFL. But if you look at that model, you know, I don't think an NFL franchise would ever say we're not going to draft anybody ever. We're just going to sign free agents. And, and on the flip side is I don't think any of the they, they go the other way with it and say we're never going to sign a free agent. Um, what they're trying to do is build the best roster possible based on uh, needs and all those things. And so that's very similar for us. So I mean, I, I think whether um, it's through the portal or through you know high school ranks, it's, you know, bringing those guys in that we think we can develop. An older transfer has, has some value. A younger transfer has value as well because of the length of time you get to, a chance to work with them. Um, so, uh, again, the, the, you know, putting the best 11 guys out there, 11 guys behind them, and then ultimately looking through the lens of what's best for you in the 23 season. And, and then, uh, obviously, moving forward, you know, what you don't do is you say, well, we're not doing transfers or we're not doing high school guys. And, uh, let's, let's make the best roster we, we possibly can. Who's competing to play safety next to Kalen? Yeah. yeah, several guys. We, uh, you know, uh, Max Williams played quite a bit uh, a year ago for us. Was a big piece of helping us win 11 football games. And I'll stand and say we don't win 11 games without him. You know, played safety, played nickel, uh, battled through injuries, played dying force, which essentially is Will linebacker. Um, and, and so you know, Max had an opportunity to compete with that spot. Bryson Shaw as well, who didn't, he wasn't with us uh, until kind of midway through the season. I, I guess on the, on the front end of the season, we didn't have fall camp with us or, or last spring with us. And, uh, you know, show well at times. We'll have a chance to design branch for the guy that was injured all last year. You know, young player that we're awfully excited about uh, in the previous recruiting class that didn't have a chance to play. And then Christian Pierce coming in as a young guy as well. And you know, one of the messages to the secondary guys is regardless of position, we put the best five guys out there. We weren't able to necessarily do that as much as we would like to a year ago, whether because of injuries or numbers and, and some of those things. But ultimately, you want to get to that point. This is, they're all competing to be that guy. So how does Christian Roland Wallace fit into that best five? Could we see him in nickel? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a guy we're going to try at a couple different spots. You know, and, and so similar uh, you know, message to him as, as all the guys is every rep you take a corner, you're competing to be you know, at the nickel. Every rep you take a nickel, you're competing to be at, at, at safety, so on and so forth. But uh, he, he's a guy we'll start both the, the corner spot and nickel spot and kind of get a chance to evaluate from that. Thank you. Thank you. How do you kind of build on, you know, getting 19 receptions and, yeah. you know, having your first time of the day, you know? So there were some positives. The, uh, <laughs> you know, leading the country, you know, in, in, in tournament market. I mean, one of the things we talk to the guys about is takeaways you can make and say that because it's true. We, we won the tournament battle 11 times last year. We won 11 football games and, and did it three times in there. So it went the other way. And so I think it's proved positive to the guys in terms of some of the things that we preach. I think it's, it's something that uh, is consistent across not just at USC, but across football. And so that's, that's something that's obviously a major emphasis for us. And, um, you know, I, I think, like, like I said, the, the proof of the pudding in terms of the, the impact you can have on games. And then, then also, too, the impact you can have from an, an offensive standpoint, stealing possessions to, to, to get their offense and um, you know, finding ways, obviously, to get on the field. That's the natural piece. But also just the, the steal possession that we give in the offense. It's critical, and, and it will never, ever, ever go away in this sport. You said it's important to kind of realize you're not coaching the 2022 group anymore. Yeah. When it comes to coaching the 23 group, what are some of the – things you've done differently or approaches that you've changed kind of going into school? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, probably more same as than, than different. I think that's the natural piece of, you know, when you come in year one and year two, um, you, you're looking at everything and we continue to talk about it. It's what, what can we enhance? What, what can we change? Again, if it's just in the, in, the, in the name of changing something, throw something against the wall and see if this thing's going to work, then we're probably not prepared to be in this position to, to, to you know, build a program at USC. You know, you're not in the business of being realistic, but the same you know, portion of it, you got to make sure that uh, 
Um, again, you give the guys credit for the successes that they have and, and be very realistic about the deficiencies. And then also understand it's a punitive system. And, and so really sport is. So someone's to blame, and then you, you, you take ownership in that as a coach. Um, and continue to move forward. But uh, no, you, you, you look at everything. I mean, the, what, what do we change? Um, we're going to put 11 guys out there. We're going to fight for the football every single snap. I think, you know, obviously as, as time goes on and evaluating these guys, can we lean in certain directions? Uh, what a four-man front, three-man front, you know, man coverage versus zone coverage. I think all that stuff's still being decided. We like to think of, of ourselves being multiple that way. I certainly think yeah, as you look at uh, last year, I will say this, is there certain things that, that you know, in mean, year, year one, you want to limit your package as best that you can to give these guys a chance to be successful. On the same token, you look at it through the lenses, did you ask them to do too much? It can't be both. And in some instances, it, it, it certainly was. But, um, so, no, and everything's obviously on the table moving forward. But, but you know, the, the, the big picture stuff in terms of who you want to be, what you want to be, did we succeed that in year one? No, but that, that piece doesn't change. You want to be an aggressive defense. You want body on body and coverage, and, and you want to be, you know, affect the passer, um, you know, there's a special type of quarterbacks that, that, that we face here. So, um, no, probably more same as the game. The overall increase in depth. How does that change the complexion of what you want to do? Yeah, I, I think it just you know cr creates a little bit more competitiveness in, in the room uh, across the board. I, I think you know it creates a situation, and then some is just the maturity level of the guys uh, as well. It's, it's making sure that you know um, are we have to manage guys a little bit less and be able to coach them a little bit more. And then part of that is again just the nature of the beast is understanding that you gotta you gotta play at a high level or someone else who could, could possibly take that spot. And so um, you know that that. That can drive a lot of things from a depth standpoint. Um, it, it changes conversations. You know, it, it, regardless of how I play on a particular day, um, I, you know, I'm still going to find myself either in the starting lineup or on the field on Saturday. It's not, not a real good recipe for a successful program. So ha having some depth that way and also understanding that, that injuries happen as well. So you know, all that's, uh, uh, that, that's a big piece of it. Now, that, that, it, it's fine to have bodies. They've got to make sure from a league standpoint that these guys are really well. Uh, not deficient in, in, in a way that would keep them off the field. So we, we got to make sure that we continue to develop them. Sean was talking about the defensive line, especially getting a lot bigger yeah. over the course of the offseason. Was that a directive from you? You, you kind of saw how things ended last year and thought we have to get bigger up front to really take another step. Yeah, I mean, part of it is, you know, we, we call them the, the, the NFL standard, the combine standard. So, okay, what, what are the attributes that the, the NFL looks for at all positions, not just the defensive line? And that, that takes all opinions off of the, the coaching staff. What do we think a defensive line should be? This is USC. The, the expectation the best players are on level. And our best defensive line will be second on draft production. That, that's the expectation. So we look at it through that line. So as we educate guys, um, it's a pretty good place to start and say, okay, but you say you want to play at that, that level. The, the best at all should be, be uh, capable of playing at that level. And so using that uh, uh, kind of model for the guys, um, I, I think certainly helps us. And, and, but they got to go do the work. And Coach Wiley's done a tremendous job with that. But that's the point that we continue to drive home. Is, is, uh, you know, and obviously it's got to be size you know, combined with the athletic piece. I mean, ultimately we it comes down to making players. But uh, no, as a unit, it's stronger, it's faster. you got to assume everyone else is bigger, stronger, and faster as well. So when we do these things the next 30 days, we're going to uh, be tell tech only to see When you're doing the you know, soul searching, looking at different levels of college, yeah. college, you know, pro, whatever, is there anything in particular this off season that you really kind of took a deep dive into or found yourself especially interested in? That no, that's a good question. I, I mean, one of the things that we did, which was unique, and a lot of times you don't do, is we went back and watched practice. You know, everybody sees Saturdays, and, and part of it was just a reminder to us, maybe, you know, you know, as you evaluate game film, you're going through the cutouts, you're saying, well, shoot, why don't we do this? Okay, let's watch Tuesday at game week. It, 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 it provides a little bit of insight, maybe, why you didn't do certain things. Um, you know, it, 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 again, takes some, some, some discipline, and, and, and you got to rip off some band-aids to, to do some of those things, but you know, kind of remind yourself of that. And that, that was something new, not, not something that, uh, uh, quite frankly, ever done, you mentioned 20 years in it, I don't think we've ever done it, but that was something that, uh, you know, kind of came to us and said, okay, let's this, this really look at, okay, this, we can pretend to be surprised by Saturday's performance, um, which is fine, that makes you a fan, but if you're a coach on Tuesday and Wednesday, we've got to make sure that, uh, that may not be the same issue, um, but uh, we're, we're, we're chinks in the armor that way, for instance, finishing football games. 
You know, if you can't put together a Tuesday and Wednesday and two hours on the practice field versus scout team, it's going to be really hard to play 60 minutes to get the lead on the when you talk about championship games uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, bowl games and some of those things. So um, they did a, a major deep dive, uh, among others, uh, as we heard with some, some NFL programs as well. What did you learn from watching practice? Oh, we got to get better. The, the consistency aspect of things got got to show up. I mean, a lot of things in the moment you you, you know, but you got to remind yourself of. I guess is, is the most appropriate way. And we also showed, you know, our defensive leaders that we said we can get bigger, faster, and stronger. Uh, we can make any adjustments that we want. Again, lean on certain coverages versus other coverages. But if we show up on the on, on a game we can practice and you know, tear down trust amongst us. Um, then it, it, it becomes a, a really difficult task, and then it's going to be a real confident group for 60 minutes on Saturday, especially when things you know start flying, and, and, and obviously you play good opponents in that, and uh, you never be perfect on Saturday. But uh, and that was that, that was a uh, uh, you know hopefully a, a big moment for our guys and something to continue to talk about, which applies obviously in spring football, fall camp, and ultimately when you get in the suit. And then speaking of defensive leaders, you elected to have Mason Cobb go to Pac-12 Media Day. What does that say about the impact he's made already in a short? Yeah, he's really real shot in the arm. Force in in, uh, in spring football, you know, a guy that uh, you can talk about, kind of that running hit factor, a guy that, that that wants to be around the football, a guy that you don't have to convince to go hard, right? Is is um, you know, and, uh, you know, can help you, you know, and obviously a guy that's played a lot of football, so um, and uh, kind of made a real statement in those 15 days in particular, and then obviously that, that's also the way we call the workouts and all those things. So excited about Mason. Given this, you were prompted to go even deeper, and if you look at practices from last year. Did you see the end of last season was the most frustrating stretch you've had as a coach? Oh, I think it's all frustrating. I mean, I've been very, very <laughs> fortunate um, to, to be on the positive side. I'm, I'm a lot more Saturdays than I've been on the negative side, and that's that's um, which makes sense. And obviously, it doesn't make sense when it's on the negative side. And it kind of it's hard to reconcile some of those things. Um, but that's that that's part of it. But along those same lines, I think the most frustrating part. We had conversations, um, not all of us, but a lot of us, you know, on, on Saturday game days after games and talking about fourth quarters and the frustration. I don't remember being real excited after 11 wins last year either because, you know, the last 15 minutes stings you. Um, and so that was, that, that's part of it too is just looking through the last week. You know, sometimes you feel like, boy, you cry wolf. You say, well, if we don't finish football games, it's going to impact us. Um, and, and we really struggled in the fourth quarter last year. We, we, we did. And part of that's maturity. Part of that's understanding what it takes to win, learning how to win. Um, and, and part of that is, you know, the mental resilience part. But, um, you know, I think 10 points on average in the fourth quarter. You know, just go, statistically, you, you look at that, you can't be obviously a good statistical defense if you do some of those things. 120 yards a game in the fourth quarter. And again, it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter if you, if you end up on the side of it, but it, eventually it does. Um, you know, three football games we lost, all lost in the fourth quarter. 17 points a game in the fourth quarter in our final three ball. And 17 points a game, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a statement. 14 points a game on the, on the road in the fourth quarter. You know, it's very hard to be statistically very good. And it's hard to win 11 football games, and somehow we did. And so that, that's something that, um, believe me, the message is being delivered. The message necessarily is, it has not been uh, received at that point. But that's a message that never goes away. That wasn't specific to one season. You can go through every team in college football and, and by and large, in, in, in the National Football League as well. And so a lot of their season was predicated on how they put in the fourth quarter. Um, and so part of that, too, goes back to the habitual piece, going back to the habits. If you have good habits, you know, over the course of time, it, it, it can go you know, real positive for you. If you have bad habits, eventually they catch up to you. Or when you develop those, that's on, again, you know, on the practice field and those things. So, um, that uh, absolutely frustrating, but it wasn't limited to just that. I mean, there's there's a, there's a lot that uh, um, over the course of the season that uh, you know, we look back on and say, okay, we got to be in front of this. There's guys that, are, that you can define for playing in the fourth quarter by just having more numbers. Which Coach Newitt talked about defensive line. Maybe that's that's one thing that helps. There's experience. What about the thing that you can't get guys? Like when you look at this team and this group, how much are you seeing of that? What are the signs? You know. Part of that fourth quarter is they got to just go do it at some point, right? Right, and, and, and some of the, yeah, there, number one, you make it an emphasis. I mean, and, and believe me, it, it was, and, and, and we were in the, you know, also I think it's an understanding of guys that, um, you know, what it takes to win. And I think when, when you, you know, maybe didn't win a whole lot prior to, that that's going to be new. Um, I don't think that's unique to a first-year program um, to, to have some of those struggles. 
Um, but also, again, it's not limited to a first year program. I mean, you, we, we, there, there's been conversations over you know, every, every place I've ever coached, we've had that conversation about the fourth quarter. Man, 15 minutes can change your career. You know, 15 minutes can change a season. And, and it's, and, and what, you know, on, on the, I guess call it a positive, but only if the message is received is now we have a visual. We say, okay, listen, now if, if, if we don't play 60 minutes of football games, you cannot be a champion in college football. It will not happen. Um, and so, um, again, part of it's the messaging, part of it's you know get, getting the, the, the point driven uh, across. And, and again, go back to the habit piece. I mean, again, when, that, when the habits are right, and it's something that's consistent in you. Um, then, then it doesn't matter if the, you know, whatever the scoreboard reads, whether it's on the positive side, negative side, 30 minutes going the game, 10 minutes going the first quarter, whatever it is, um, it shouldn't impact your performance. Um, so that's a challenge for them. I know you have some tra- you have a whole training camp left to figure this stuff out, but I'm just curious, how much cross-training do you expect to do on the back end, and how confident are you at this moment that you might have an idea about how the pieces fit? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's tough as a coach in, in this time of year because everybody's excited, right? Because you, know, you, you haven't played a game in a long time, you know? And so, um, but but to, I think to say that we're an excited coaching staff would be an understatement. I think to, to say that we're a, a confident group would be a, a, an understatement in terms of uh, the group we have coming back. I think the ability to cross-train guys will present itself over time. We'd like to be able to. You know, by and large, I think about the best DBs I've ever been around. And they've been guys that if you told them to go play nickel, they can play nickel, safety, safety, you know, and vice versa, and, and on and on again. I think it's the same thing that applies to linebacker, D line, and all those things. So I'm trying to get the 11 best guys out there. You don't want anybody to be a, a, a starter for you in a position to play on Saturday by default. And so we, we got all those things got to take place. But, but, but certainly very, very excited about, you know, going into to this training camp. I'm going to steal a 